You wanna be successful? You have to study success. They say success leaves clues. But for me, I don't wanna be good at just some things. I wanna be good at a lot of things. Golf, internet marketing, relationships, even eating bananas. So who did I study? Monkeys. That's right. Ooh, 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 ah. <laughs> Why? Because they eat a buttload of bananas. They are the banana eating experts. And after months of studying them, it was so simple I'd almost missed it. But it turns out they actually open up bananas from the bottom. See, what we were taught from traditional belief was to open a banana up from the top. Oh, were we wrong. See, for them to maximize the amount of volume of bananas they eat, they had to find a more constructive way of opening up bananas. Less strain on the fingers, easier, quicker. So you guys, if you actually just go find a banana, open it up from the bottom, you're really just gonna maximize the efficiency of your banana opening skills. You're welcome. You guys, I'm not lying, look how easy this is. It's from the bottom. It makes it 10 times easier. But whatever you do, don't eat this little death nut, or where is it? This little thing right here, this little nut, that's poison. I think it could kill you. That's a damn good banana. <laughs> that's a damn good banana right there. <laughs> yeah. Yep, that's a that's a damn good banana right there, boy. <laughs> that's a damn good banana right there, boy. I love wearing sunglasses. It's like I can stalk people without them knowing. It's like Facebook, but in real life. So today's video, you guys, I'm gonna answer a couple questions. One person asked me a question on my last vlog. Gabe, why aren't you showcasing yourself more since you are PGA Tour driven? I get a lot of comments on Facebook and YouTube on you know what tournaments I'm playing in. So I wanna answer a couple of those. Then I'm also gonna be doing a giveaway and I figured I'd also share with you guys what I'm working on in my swing and whatever footage I get for today. So just a tiny little vlog for you guys. All right, you guys, here on the range, I wanted to share with you guys you know, what I'm working on in my swing. Basically, I have two philosophies that I make my whole swing about. And the first one is basically never slowing down, never deselling, never stalling. So for me, I always want to continue rotation and always continue to speed up through the ball. That's one of my main things. And the other thing I'm working on is basically having a low closure rate of the club face, right? So there's what I call rolling the club face through impact which would be the closing of being open to closed. And then there's flipping is where you're just adding loft, right? You're cupping your hands at impact. So rolling would be the rotation and flipping would be the flipping and adding loft to the club. So those are the two things that I really don't want to happen. I want to do what me and my instructors call a drive hold type release, where we square the face up a little early, we get our hands ahead and we hold it through impact. So we're slowing down the closure rate of the club face. So that I think is probably, at least what we believe in, is the most consistent way to be hitting through the impact area. So that's basically two things I'm working on, is rotating, speeding up, never stalling, and keep a low closure rate of the club face through impact. I don't want to see any of this rolling, but staying a square, drive holding, release pattern. Nice, square up a little early, and then hold. Also trying to get my hips a little more open at impact as well. Try to get a little more cleared, a little more earlier. One of the things I'm working on is, uh, like I said, trying to get my hands more ahead at impact. So right now I'd like to hit like a lot of three quarter shots and just really focus on getting this left hand bowed a little more. This right one cupped and just trying to hold it and then try to take that into my full swing. Another thing I've been working on that's been helping me as well is uh, like a sequence drill where I go up to the top, pause, then hit. Um, that's been helping me not stall as much as well. Yo, Toby, you gonna spit a flow for us today? Hmm? You gonna spit a flow, a little rap for the viewers? I want to hear some of that Kendrick Lamar freestyle you were doing yesterday. Like in German. In Austrian. In 
German? You want, to sing, you want me to sing in German? I want you to do half a half English, half Donkashank. <laughs> Spit a flow every day. Chilling with Toby, trying him to say some raps while he's playing golf on the course. And of course, he didn't come here in a horse, he came here in a car. <laughs> and it wasn't very far because he lives on the course. But he brought me a jar of cookies the other day. They were so delicious in my tummy. You gonna match that? That's weak sauce. Weak sauce, I'm a boss. What's the cost? Because I'm a cheap person. I don't want to lose what I've already lost. I throw rocks at your face. But then again, it can't get uglier than it did the other day. All right, Toby, let me see what you're working on. Show us again. <laughs> Chi Chi style. Chi Chi style, let's see it. Do a practice swing real quick though. Let's see, give the viewers okay. a little taste. Okay, it's a little slow motion. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, mama, is that the double ER? That's double ER. Double external rotation to double internal rotation? Yeah. Woo, doggy. I'll try to hit it. Okay, let me get over here actually. This is a better angle. Oh! <laughs> Did you just mash that? I did okay. Was that mash city? No. Nah. Yeah. That is okay. That looked pure. Chi Chi style. What's the what's goal of that? Save you save power, then explode it? Yeah. You save, 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 then. Oh, mama. <laughs> Let's do it again. See if, I, see if I can smash it. Okay. Smash for Woo! This is weird, but that's okay. All right, let's get a DTL. Let's get it down the line. Okay, out here chilling on the range with uh, Radcon. What's up, Joseph? What's going, going on, buddy? How we doing? Doing good. So, what do you got? What do you got on that chest of yours right there? Well, got a little towel here. Doing a little towel drill. For some reason, not really sure what it does, but it seemed to hit it well. So, I like doing this drill. Codwin's got a pure swing. Good ball there. You're actually being genuine right now. Like you yeah. don't really necessarily know exactly what it does, but you hit the ball better. I have no idea what it does, to be honest with you. But for some reason, I tend to hit it good. So why not do the drills that make you hit it well? <laughs> I love it. That's the that's the game of golf in a nutshell. We don't know why we hit it bad. We don't know why we hit it good. We don't know why what does anything. Who knows? All I know is make you hit it well. <laughs> Here. Um, simple, boring works. Yeah, three things. Um, feathering means the ball's going cracking. The movement towards improvement. PJ Tour driven. Nelson knows what it is. Oh yeah, dude, I love those videos, man. This guy gives me dollars for gas. Just yeah. testimonials. You gotta put me in one of your videos, dude. Holy mashes. I need some improvement. <laughs> well, boy, I can obviously tell, but I don't want to just come out blatant like that. What are you hitting there, Hamza? Just a bit of six on, like. <laughs> Why don't you tell them what you're doing? Um, <clears throat> Joe's got me putting a little bit of my weight more on the toes, arching my back a little. To find pelvis neutral, yeah. right? Yes, sir. And so engaging that core. So we're making sure we're having more stability in the foot. More neutral pelvis, core engagement, so that he can eliminate much of the unneeded linear movement and have a more balanced rotary golf swing, which is the first step towards what we're doing with Hamza. What are you hitting there, Hamza? Um, just a six iron. What's the standard six iron distance for you? About 200. Jeez. Where are you from, Hamza? Oh man, that's a that's a good question. I'm from Austria and from Pakistan. Half and half. Nice. Where are you from, Gabe? I'm from uh, 
Colorado Springs. He was born and then grew up in San Diego. And then been out here for a month. Just for a month? Yep. Mom, do you think you're like half club longer than me? Half? Yeah, probably. Half to one? Half to one. Yeah. I say if he wants though, it could be two. Well, it depends if I bust it or not. Yeah. <laughs> Like a half club longer, I'm swinging like 50%, but full yeah. two clubs, roughly. That's stupid. By the way, you're not allowed to bust one yet. Okay. okay. Go through these motions first. Yeah. You are not allowed to bust one yet. <laughs> Got it? Got it. What's up, though? Bad. How bad? You see some improvement. I think ju just me watching you, you've already gotten better. My aura. No, my focus is sort of yeah. being uplifted by your presence, dude. Ooh, I like that. All right, pure Hamza, keep it up. Thanks, man. That's weird. Load any of that stuff. You put any stress force on any of the shafts you have, and they just start getting wobbly. Because you're not. And I can tell you that's still off. Somewhere weight or line angle or something still can be better on those. What's up you guys? So I get a lot of questions on, you know, I got one question on one of my vlogs, Gabe, why aren't you showcasing yourself more since you are PGA Tour driven? I get a lot of questions on Facebook and YouTube, Gabe, what tournaments are you doing? Basically, what are you doing to get to the tour? And I want to talk a little bit about that and also the PGA Tour driven, the movement towards improvement philosophy, what it really means. And I want to start off by saying is you have to understand, we have the PGA Tour, which is the best tour in the world. And then we have the second best tours, which is like European, Asian, uh, Japan, Australia, and those are like the second best tours. And then we have these mini tours around the states, uh, the Gateway Tour here in Arizona, the E-Golf Tour in the Carolinas, uh, Golden State, California. And what you have to understand is that most, maybe 90% of the golfers in these mini golfer, mini golf tours don't make a living. So what I mean by that is they don't have to worry about paying rent or car or insurance or food or gas. You know, they either have parents paying for these things or sponsors. So uh, their goal is to only go golfing every day and try to improve six to eight hours every day. They don't have to worry about making money. For instance, my friend, uh, my roommate, you know, he played in a tournament down here. 90 guys, all really good, deep field. He got 15th place out of 90 guys and made $100. So, you know, cost $1,200 tournament. He made $100, be getting 15th out of 90 players. 60 guys don't make the cut. Um, so you have a lot more to lose than gain and, and you can't have to worry about working paying for you know rent and electricity and I have to pay. and so for me for me I don't have that luxury right now I have to worry about paying for rent and electricity and paying Cox for my internet and my golf club membership and gas and food and these type of things so for me I don't have the the resources to be able to play a tournament whether it costs 1200 or 600 because if I lose that I'm not going to be eating literally so that's one of the things, and that's the thing we have to understand is that we're all on our own journey towards being the best that we can be. You know, whether you have enough money, which can be a blessing and a curse. I know uh, kids that are trying to get on tour that have all the money in the world, so they don't need to grind as much, right? They don't, they, if they don't play that good, it doesn't really matter to them because they can go out to the casino afterwards, they can go back home, they have a place. It doesn't, there's not much uh, pressure, right? Because it, it doesn't matter, they have all the money in the world, so. And there's other people on the other end of the spectrum that have no money that can't play in them because if they were to lose or not play a good, they can't lose $1,200 so they'll be homeless. Um, depending, even if they are good enough, they just can't put that type of pressure on them. So there's a lot of different dynamics going on there. But for me, you have to understand the PG Tour driven, the movement towards improvement, 
it is very personal to each and every one of us. Each and every one of us are on our journey towards becoming the best golfers we want to be or the best instructors or superintendents or whatever it is, it is in life. It has nothing to do with really getting to the PGA Tour. It's about where you are in your life and maxing your potential and controlling what you can control every day, your attitude, what you do, and always striving to getting better. So that's the thing is some of us have resources, some of us don't. The thing is, okay, so you know, I'm not gonna throw a pity party. Oh, I don't got someone pay me four grand a month to, to play and practice and, and play in tournaments. I mean, there's people in worse positions than me and there's people in better positions with me and that, that goes basically for all of us. So it has nothing to do with judging yourself on what other people have or what you don't have. It has to do with, with this is where you're at in life and you gotta do whatever you can to get better. That's it, that's, that's it playing so far. PG Tour Driven, the movement towards improvement. For me, I gotta work on my videos right now. I have to figure out how to make enough money off my videos and websites and internet so I can play and practice and play in tournaments. I can't ever rely on somebody else to pay me four grand to just live. You know, 95%, 100% of people, most people gotta get up, go to work, make money, and then go home so they could pay for their apartment, for their car, for their family, for food, that type of thing. So you have to understand that golf, there is that hierarchy where it's still very for the wealthy people. You have to have a lot of money to be able to play this game, especially trying to do it professionally. You can't spend six, eight hours a day worrying about work because that takes away from the time that you need to be practicing. And if you're going to be banging with Tiger Woods, Steve Stricker, um, you know, Roy McIlroy, Adam Scott, Luke Donald, Jason Day, I mean, you're trying to bang, bang with the best in the world, you have to give everything you have every single day and it needs to be efficient and you work your ass off. You can't worry about making money. So even for me right now, I'm trying to, uh, even this video today, it's gonna be about 45, 50 minutes of video and I gotta go record it all, then I gotta go import it, then render it, which takes about three hours and spend about an hour and a half you know, editing it and then 30 minutes, uh, well then I have to export, that, export it, then import it into YouTube. And you know, I'm working with uh, graphic designers on getting some logos made, some graphic designers to get some graphic animations made. You know, I got my Gabriel Ryder website, I have a PJ Tour Driven website. So right now, I'm spending a lot of time more on the computer than I am golfing because I don't have that luxury. I have to figure out how I can make money. Because you have to understand, this is a good possibility. It is a definite possibility that I won't be making videos soon. Because, you know, I came down here from San Diego and I saved up some money working at the Golf Mart and for TaylorMade, but it's running out quick right now because I haven't been working. So I have to figure out how to make some money or else I'm going to have to go get a job at a golf store, a uh, golf course, so I can pay for my rent and electricity and for my internet. So I've been thinking about a couple of ideas on maybe doing some online golf lessons for you guys because um, I don't have a contract to teach here over at uh, Legacy yet, but maybe do some online lessons or some drills I could send. Or, uh, But I have to figure out how I can make some money so I can continue doing this. And I like doing it. I'd rather do this than uh, be working at a golf shop or a golf store or that type of thing. So for me, we're all on our own journey and you got to figure out where you're at and do your best to improve. How's it going you guys? So it's about 2.15 in the morning. Uh, I said I would do a giveaway, so I'm gonna give away this Iomic putter grip. So if you're actually gonna use this and you actually want it, leave a comment below and I'll just end up picking uh, one of the subscribers in the comments. And I'm also gonna give away this uh, Callaway, the new Callaway golf ball sleeve. So thanks for watching you guys. Gabriel Ryder here. Talk to you soon.